Data-Driven Material Requirements Planning, or DDMRP, is a quantitative method intended to optimize the supply chain performance of multi-echelon manufacturing businesses. Multi-echelon in the supply chain context refers to multiple stocking points in the supply chain network. This method delivers the quantities to be either bought or manufactured for any SKU of a multi-level bill of material, or BOM. A BOM represents the assemblies, components and parts, and the quantity of each needed to manufacture the end product. DDMRP seeks to determine, at any point in time, how much more raw material should be sourced and whether more units of any SKU should be produced. The problem is challenging, however, because there is no direct correlation between the quality of service of any intermediate SKU and the quality of service of the end product. Adding more stock to a given SKU only improves the end product's quality of service if the SKU was, somehow, a bottleneck in the manufacturing flow. Real-world supply chains tend to exhibit further complications, such as batch sizes, shelf lives, and imperfect substitutes, when a more expensive part can be used as a replacement if the less expensive one is unavailable. Those complications require further data to be reflected by the model. The MRP perspective, on the other hand, is geared around the analysis of lead times and identifies the bottlenecks as the longest path, time-wise, in the BOM graph. In order to identify this bottleneck, the MRP offers two distinct numerical methods to assign a static lead time to every edge of the BOM graph. Manufacturing lead times, which is maximally optimistic and assumes that the inventory is always available everywhere, or on the cumulative lead times, which is maximally pessimistic and assumes that the inventory is always unavailable and lead times only depend on the time to produce the first unit starting from the blank state. Both methods are overly simplistic and usually deliver nonsensical lead times. Computing purchase or production orders based on deeply flawed lead time estimates end up generating a mix of overstocks and stockouts, depending on whether the lead times turn out to be grossly over or underestimated. The goal of DDMRP is to mitigate the flaws of MRP and enable the supply chain practitioner to compute the quantity to buy and to manufacture when facing a multi-level bomb situation. Modeling a supply chain is, by necessity, an approximation of the real world, and all models become a trade-off between precision, relevance, and computational feasibility. That being said, DDMRP is abusably simplistic with regards to many factors that cannot reasonably be dismissed anymore when considering present computing hardware. The supply chain exists to serve the economic interests of the company. Putting it more bluntly, the company maximizes the dollars of returns that are generated through its interactions with the economy at large. Yet real supply chain decisions are also almost always multidimensional problems. For example, after producing a batch of 1,000 units, a manufacturer might put those 1,000 units in a container for sea freight. But if a stockout is imminent down the supply chain, it might be profitable to have 100 units out of those 1,000 shipped by aircraft to mitigate the pending stockout ahead of time. Here, the choice of transportation mode is an extra dimension to the supply chain prioritization challenge. In order to address the challenge, the prioritization method requires the capacity to integrate the economic drivers associated with the diverse options that are available to the company. DDMRP, on the other hand, has a one-dimensional prioritization scheme and optimizes percentages of error against arguably arbitrary targets, its buffers. In conclusion, the DDMRP is correct in stating that its prioritization is a more flexible approach compared to a binary all-or-nothing approaches as implemented by the MRPs, but the prioritization scheme proposed by DDMRP itself is rather incomplete.